Hey guys, Real1701 here, and today I have another little redstone tutorial for you guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at a digital combination lock. Yes, you heard correctly, a digital combination lock. Now the concept is quite simple. The idea is you have uh, 9 or 10 buttons, depending if you want to count as 0 or not. And um, you need to enter a certain combination of the digits and that will open up some sort of secret door or in this case light up this lamp um, and of course we have a reset button but we'll get to that in a sec so in this case my combination my secret combination of course is one seven oh and game changer four you expected it to be one seven oh one didn't you but anyway as you can see the light the lamp uh, lit up and if I come over here and hit the reset button it will turn off and uh, if I enter any other combination it won't work so I'll just show you guys four other random numbers it will not work um, so yeah so let's take a look at how this thing works seems daunting doesn't it it's not really that hard. I'll, I can explain everything. So first of all, this thing is based on signal strength. So here are our 10 buttons and this is just a line of redstone behind them and you can see that there's a lot of comparators involved. So as you can tell and as I've said already, this is based on signal strength. Um, so we have signal strengths varying from 1 to 10 and uh, that's how we detect the different numbers over here in a very compact way. So first and foremost, uh, if if we ha if I didn't have this over here, then it would actually be signal strengths. Um, what is it, six to fifteen? But I have it subtracting five, a signal strength of five from this input signal, so that it would be from one to ten to make it simpler. Then we have uh, little units over here that are taking the signal strength the same signal strength that is in this piece of redstone will go through to all of these pieces of redstone and these are all detectors and they detect uh, specific signal strengths and the exact signal strength is determined by what's in this furnace and uh, you might have been able to tell I have some signs that I hit over here for the intro but if we just remove them then uh, I have written down exactly how many items or stacks plus items you need for each and every one of these numbers so yeah take a look uh, take a screenshot whatever you want I'll have these numbers in the description as well but um, yeah that is the number of items that you need to put in the furnace to detect a certain number. So obviously for to detect a 4 you need 42 items, to detect a 2 you need 14 items, and so on. So let's take a look. My combination was 1704 if you remember. So it should be one item, a stack of 19 items, nothing, and then 42 items. So one item, a stack of 19, nothing, and 42. And so in this way and because of this it's quite easy to change the combination if you feel insecure suddenly simply just by adjusting the number of items in these furnaces. Now a little note, these don't have to be furnaces, they can be any block with a tile entity. Uh, so any block with an inventory basically like a furnace, a chest, a hopper, a dropper, um, any anything really. So yeah, I just chose furnaces because they're probably the easiest to get in survival. Plus, they have quite a small inventory, so that you need very few items to get high signal strengths. Um, so the way this works is it subtracts the signal strength in the furnace from the signal strength of the input, and then there's a little circuit over here uh, called a red coder, and this was invented by I believe it was Q Hamster, but I'm not sure check that out later but um, so 
the combination of subtracting a specific number and the red coder circuit allows us to detect if it is a, sig a certain number. Then, if if it is the certain number, then this piece of redstone for each and every one of these corresponding to the number will light up. And once that lights up, it feeds into this piston over here and out into this repeater, which you might be able to tell is a monostable circuit. And then the signal is just extended. And so what it does is it sets this RS NOR latch, which unlocks the next repeater. Now, this is a little difficult to grasp your head around. Uh, definitely if you have little to no knowledge about redstone. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll put a world download in the description so you guys can come take a closer look if you want. And um not going to do a tutorial, really, as much as just show everything and explain how it works. And, again, have a world download. Um, but, yeah, so the basic idea is we have an array of our snore latches that lock the next com the next repeater in the row because as you remember uh from before when i said that when this piece of led of redstone lights up after detecting that a certain number has been pressed um it outputs to this repeater now this repeater is locked unless the rs nor latch is set uh so let me just uh you know never mind i'll demonstrate that later but um once the RS snore latch is set, then the next repeater in the line will be unlocked so that when the pulse is detected for this for the number coming next in the in the code, then it could output and um we don't see this in the first one because we don't really need it, but for anyone except for the first one, you will notice that it resets the same RS snore latch that unlocked it, which means that uh just three ticks later, uh, or no, just several ticks later, the same repeater that triggered this thing will be locked again. But by that time, the next RS snore latch in the line will have been set so that the next repeater in the line will have been unlocked. And so basically, it's just a series kind of like that that enables the detection of multiple numbers pressed in a certain series. Now, uh, another thing to note is that every any any number that we press, it doesn't matter which number we press, it will uh, reset all of these in a very exact timing, um, and that that ensures that if we press a number that is not in the combination, it will reset the entire thing because we don't want to let someone enter parts of the combination and then enter other numbers and then complete the combination and it'll still work. No. Once the wrong number is entered, everything should be reset. So let me just demonstrate and you might be able to notice some changes over here. So let's start the combination. It's one. So this thing lights up. That that shows us that the first number in the series has been pressed. And as you might be able to tell, this repeater, which was locked just seconds ago, is now unlocked. Now, when I press 7 in a moment, um, this thing will trigger and it will lock this repeater again and reset this RS snore latch, but it will set this one and unlock this repeater. So let's take a look at that. There we go. This one is locked again, as you can see. This one is unlocked, and this is set, and this is reset. Um, and I'll do a 0 now, just to show. Next one. Um, and that's pretty much it, so now I'll just demonstrate that it does actually reset, so if I hit a wrong number, such as 3, or let's hit 9, it doesn't really matter, everything resets and the light doesn't, the lamp doesn't light up. Now once the whole code has been entered correctly, the very last piece of redstone dust right over here will be triggered, and since this repeater will have been unlocked in that case, it will send a signal, and the first thing it'll do is it'll reset the RS NOR latch before, before it like everyone does. Uh, but it'll also trigger a line underneath here that goes all the way back to the start and sets this RS NOR latch. Now, it doesn't matter that it's here. It could have just as well been over there, but it's easier over here for the reset line. 
Now, the reset, what it does is basically it just resets this artist Snorlax latch and also resets any progress that has been done in the code. So, for example, if I hit parts of the code or have the code partially entered and I hit reset, you can see that uh, some of the progress has been made. I hit reset and it's reset. <laughs> and also, obviously, if I hit the entire code, so 1, 7, 0, and let's see if I can actually show this, 1, 0, 1, 7, 0, 4, and you can see that this line lit up and it set this uh, RS Norlatch and lit up this lamp, and when I hit this reset button, it will reset this, but I also want to demonstrate if I have some of the progress done, it'll still, it'll do both. It'll reset the progress and reset the output, so... Here we go. Just resets the artist Norlatch and resets all of these as well. And yeah, guys, that is us mostly done. Just one last thing I'd like to point out. Uh, for those of you wondering, it doesn't have to be a lamp, obviously. This is just your output. Um, this this torch. This torch is your output. So you can take it from here. This is your output line. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, so one demonstration of something that we can do with this is a simple jeb door. Now a jeb door needs to have its input inverted anyway so we can just get rid of this torch altogether and then if I just also just before we leave I want to demonstrate a different combination just to show it real quick so I'm gonna do the combination 1948 uh, doesn't matter as that is the year of the Israeli uh, Declaration of Independence. For those of you who don't know, I am from Israel, and I just screwed up. All right, there we go. And there we go. So one nine four eight, and our jeb door opened. We can come in, grab our secret chests, or enter our secret base. And when we're done, we hit the reset, and it's safe and secure. Yeah, guys, but that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed, and please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know if you want to see more of this kind of video, complex redstone-y things, I guess. Um, I definitely enjoy making these, but like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.